First is Peter Fisk, who is no stranger to most of you. So please welcome Peter Fisk. <laughs> welcome, Peter. Okay. Take a seat. We live in this most incredible time. The things you can do as a marketer are amazing. The choices you make are infinite. You can look across the world and you can see competitors in every market coming into Turkey and saying, I want your customer. And you can see markets across the world from Brazil to Mexico, from Indonesia to China and say, I want to be part of that too. You can see technology which changes the way in which you engage like never before. Be it mobile or be it online, or be it contagious, out of control, your brand grows in ways like you never thought it could. But I think we live in a world which is complex, but at the same time, incredible. I agree with Peter, it's the most incredible time to be a marketer because you can do so many things. You can change the world in so many ways. And the opportunities to grow your business, the opportunities to extend into new categories are unlimited. It's not about what you made and about just selling that and marketing that better than before. It's about saying, how can I use my ideas better? How can I use my brand to get into new markets? How can I use networks to reach further than my capabilities, both in terms of what I make and where I go? It's about doing things which you never thought possible to inspire your customers with things they never thought possible. This is one of my favorite brands in the world, 23 and Me. 23 and Me really can change your life. It was developed by a lady called Anne Wojcicki, and she was a scientist who did DNA profiling for $99. It started off at $9,900. It went to $999, and now just for $99, 
You can spit into a bottle, and then she will profile your DNA. And by profiling your DNA, she can tell you about your future, your health, and how you will live and evolve, and how long you will live, and what you'll be uh, prone to, how you can live healthier. She'll also tell you where you come from and the genetic makeup inside you. Phenomenal. For $99, it can change your world. And if you look at businesses like that, and you think about your business, think about what you can do in the world, partly with technology, but also with focusing your imagination. And I guess that focus, that ability to say, this is what I'm going to do, this is the big opportunity which I'm going to go for, is perhaps the most important thing. What I think is crucial is that you create your space in the world. We've got this incredibly crowded world, markets full of competition, people wanting so many different things, 3,500 messages coming at you every day, boom, boom. Create your space. What is your unique space in the world? And that might be a space within a current category, or it might be redefining your category by bringing traditional sectors together in some way and doing something better, where you become truly famous for what you do. Perhaps the best way of all is to define your purpose in that world. What is the reason your company exists? Just think about that. What is the reason your company exists? How does it make a better, a better world? Or put it differently, how would the world be less good if you were not here? And I don't mean when you say purpose, that our purpose is to create more shareholder value, to double our profits, to make lots of money. What I mean is how can you make people's lives better? So whether you're Avera or Aviva, or whatever the name of your company, how can you make people's lives better? Can you say it in three words, five words? What is it which you truly do for people to make their lives better? And I guess, you know, this is one company I've worked with in the last 12 months. It's a fantastic Portuguese toilet paper company. And toilet paper is the most boring category in the world, yeah? It's toilet paper. We don't think about it. Most of it is white. It's incredibly boring. But Renova in Portugal, they have a purpose to create the world's sexiest toilets. Yeah? Sexiest bathrooms, even. And what they do is they do not make white toilet paper. They make black and pink and red and yellow and green. They even make sparkling toilet paper. So doing something different in your world, even in the most traditional or commodity category, how can you find your space? How can you do something truly different for people? And the second part of focus is then to simplify. And I'm not just talking about your brand. I'm talking about everything you do in marketing. So be it in terms of the markets which you choose to go for. So if you see growth and you say, oh, I want to grow in Russia and Kazakhstan, and I want to grow into Georgia, and then I want to grow into uh, United Arab Emirates, and then I want to go to India, and I want to go to China, and Indonesia is good as well, but what about Brazil? You've got to choose. So where will you focus your growth? If you're choosing new categories, which ones? If you're choosing segments of your markets, don't be average for everyone. Say, how are you going to be special for some people? So choose your focus. When you think about your products, think about the features of those products. How can I reduce and focus on just a smaller number of features which really matter to my target customers? So special for them. When you think about your communication, when you write your brochure, your website, your packaging, 
Don't think about five benefits you're going to say or seven benefits you're going to say. Think about three or two or maybe just one, one fantastic one. So focusing leads to simplifying. But as Steve Jobs said, simplifying is the hardest thing in the world. But if you really can do the thinking and clean it out, you can move mountains, he said. So simplifying is hard, but you can move mountains if you can get it right. And this whole idea that in everything you do in marketing, less is more. And that's really tough. That's really tough to stop doing things. It's really tough to say less. It's really tough to have a shorter words on your website. It's really tough to have less features. It's tough to say no to customers. But being able to do less enables you to do more. If you look at simple, so Jack Dorsey, who just made his billion dollars with Twitter, has an even better company in simple. The simplicity of every small business, imagine every small artisan in Istanbul being able to take credit cards with a simple $20 dongle added to their iPhone, iPad, and then being able to swipe the card, transforming parts of Middle East, Africa, and China too now, as well as America where it came from. The simplicity of the concept doesn't need words. But what you need is this. You need a magic marketing machine. Do you have a mar mar magic marketing machine? You need one. This is a magic marketing machine. And let me explain what happens. You have air coming in here. The air is sucked in. The vibration within this circle resonates with the air. It concentrates it. It packages the molecules together. It gives it more energy. And what Dyson says is that you will get 15 times more air out than you put in. So the air shooting out, hot or cold, is amplified, it's multiplied like never before. And this is what marketing does. If you can find focus, focus to go inwards, to simplify so that there's something which really connects with your customer when it gets inside, and then it amplifies as you come out, how less can be more. So the idea of being able to put something in and getting more out of it, being able to focus your resources, to take your budget and say, I'm gonna spend more money on these few things as opposed to doing everything, but making the choice as to what that is. So the second part is then saying, I want it to resonate. How do you me really make it resonate when it's inside the magic marketing machine? What is the message, what is the idea which will truly connect with your customers, your target customers, not everybody, but your target customers when you're inside this magic marketing machine. And that comes back to your brand, be it a corporate brand or be it a product brand. What is your purpose? What is special about you? So if we look at some of these brands and how they're taking purpose to then go through the marketing machine and then start to amplify, and then how they get there and they truly do resonate. Your brand needs to be bolder. It needs to truly stand for something. Your brand is not. Your brand is not about you. Your brand is not about your company. Your brand is not about your products, how good you are. That was the old world of brands. The new world of brands is about your customer. How can you make life better for your customers? How can you do things for them they never thought was possible? How can you enable them to do things? How can you energize them in new ways? So you have to be real. You have to be topical, both today and throughout their lives. 
and you have to be relevant, more relevant than everyone. And if you're for everybody, if you have one brand for the whole market, one brand for a product which you try to sell to everyone, it's not going to resonate. It's not going to be relevant. It's going to be average. And we don't want to be average. You don't want to be average. Don't be average. So it's about thinking like Coca-Cola. What do we do to make people's lives better? Well, every day we create moments of happiness. Or oh, it's like Crayola. It's not about crayons. It's about expressing the creativity in every child. Or Dove. It's not about soap, which makes you cleaner, which makes you beautiful, like you see on the advertising. It's about the real beauty inside. That's what resonates with its target audience. Or if you look at somebody like Nike, to inspire every athlete, asterisk, and you are an athlete, to do what they want to do. It's not about shoes, it's not about clothing. Or Cemex in the business to business world, it's not about cement, it's not about fast delivery. It's about building communities. It's about building homes, hospitals, schools, which bring communities together. Their expertise is how to design a community. That's way higher than a product. And if you can do that, people start to pay more. People start to see the real value in what you can bring as a brand. And you have the opportunity to innovate in many more ways. If you look at Gap, it's about the opportunity to express yourself every day throughout your life. If you look at Johnny Walker, it's about walking, it's about a journey, but it's about celebrating the journey. So the special moments on your journey, you celebrate and you think, ah, Johnny Walker is the way to celebrate my journey. If it's Patagonia, the outdoor clothing company, it's about caring for the environment. That's their passion. And for the target customers, that's their passion too. Or Swarovski, I love this one. Swarovski seeks to bring a little sparkle to every day. Now look at those. Every one of them is human. Every one of them is about what the brand does for people in some special way. Everyone captures the space which that brand uniquely has in the marketplace. But none of those examples are about products. Or companies. So to go through the magic marketing machine, you need to resonate. You need to have a bigger idea. You need to connect with your target customers in a bigger way. And then when you can get through this machine, you come out and you start to amplify. You start to have more impact than you ever could. And the biggest way you amplify is through word of mouth. Thank you. So the idea of being able to connect networks, be they social networks, be they distribution networks, be they emotional neural networks inside your head, being able to amplify the idea gives you this huge opportunity to touch more people, to do more innovation, and to do more with less to do things which emotionally inspire and enable people to do things which they never could before. It's not just a product. It's not just a telephone. It's so much more about how you can live life loud and full. Look at Xiaomi. Xiaomi is the imitating brand of Apple in China. But 100,000 my phones, not iPhones, my phones, sold within the first minute when they launched their My Phone in Beijing recently. In China, they'd never had brands which talked about people. They'd never had a rock star like Steve Jobs who got onto stage and talked about how he wanted to make life better for people, like Lai Jai did. It's about how, as a brand and as a marketer, and as an organization, you can inspire people. You can lift them up beyond the product, beyond logic, beyond rational, to that emotional desire level where they want it, 
even with not big budgets, not with big advertising, they want it. And then if you can do that, if you can truly get through the magic marketing machine, you resonate and you amplify, then you can have more impact, more impact for the world, more impact for people's lives, more impact for society, and more value to the customer, as well as potentially more value as a business. Some recent research last month by Siegel and Gale says that simplicity makes money. The most simple brands in the world, on average, people will pay 5.9% more for them. And it depends on markets. So in the Middle East, it's about 7%. In America, it's about 4.5%. In India, it's about 5.5% but it's around five or six percent. People will pay more for simplicity. And people will also talk about it. 75% more people will tell their friends if it's something simple. Partly because they love it, not just like it, they love it, but also because it's simple to communicate. It's simple to pass on. It becomes contagious because of its simplicity. So thinking about that impact. And that impact you can have is not just giving the idea to your ad agency or to an external person to come up with the creative idea. It's about you. And what's interesting about Red Bull is how they brought their creative team inside their organization. Red Bull Brand House is a fully-fledged agency, but at the heart of the business. People work for Red Bull. All of the ideas, all of the content, all of the intellectual property is created by Red Bull. It's a P&L, which makes more money for Red Bull than the drinks do. And so doing their air races and their fluke tags and everything else which Air Bull does, making videos about engaging people through events, being able to take that content and multiply it across many different media, that is incredibly powerful. The future of business is in creating great ideas. Marketers create great ideas. You are the creative team. So bring your agencies, your ad agencies, your digital agencies, your PR agencies, everybody else. Bring some musicians, bring some acrobats, bring some creative thinking people inside your organization and you need to do the thinking. So yes, you have databases, and you need to do the analytics, and you need to manage the people, and you need to do the operations, but you could find partners to do some of that. It's not about the making stuff, it's about having the ideas, the ideas which connect with people. And the more powerful your idea, the more bold your brand, the better you can connect with people, and potentially be much more profitable too. And that's what creates a winning business. A winning business today is an ideas and networks company. One who can focus out of this incredible world of complexity. It can focus and then it can simplify and then it can connect. It can resonate with its target customers, be they in a local or a global market, be they virtual across the world or physical within a local country. And then they can amplify out in ways like you never could before. And Steve Prefontaine, he's the hero of Nike. If you go to Nike campus in Beaverton, Oregon, there's a statue of Steve Prefontaine, who was a, an American runner, a hero of Nike. He was Phil Knight who created Nike. He was his hero. And he says, don't be afraid. Because sometimes you have to give up the good. You have to give up the good to find the great. So don't be afraid to do less. Don't be afraid to say no to markets or segments or some products or some features or some messages. Don't be afraid to say no to some of them. It's hard, I, I find it hard. But then be bold to go for the great to find the things which really connect and resonate in the world. So don't be afraid to focus and simplify.
because greatness is in amplifying less and having more impact for people to make people's lives better. Don't be afraid to go for the great. So there we go. The magic marketing machine. Think about how in a world of complexity, focus, simplify, resonate. And from that resonance, that true connection with people every day in real time and throughout your brand's life in the big world with big ideas, how can you then amplify and have more impact to become a winning business? And I'll be talking more about that in the workshop tomorrow about how do you innovate your brand. But for now, I'd just like to leave you with this. Song on so many different dials Cause I got more f***ing than a disciplined child So when they see me, everybody barack, barracks Man, I'm like a young gun, fully black, barack I cry teardrops over the massive attack I only make hits like I work with a racket and back Look at my jacket and hat, so damn bizarre So down to earth, I'm bringing gravity back Adopted by the major, I want my family back People work hard just to get all their salary tax Look, I'm just a writer from the ghetto like Mallory Black You have to keep screaming till they hear you out. Oh. Stop!